Good morning. Uh, it's always nice to have you here with us. Today we're celebrating the Feast of Pentecost, which is actually the second most important feast of the year. Easter comes first, then Pentecost, then probably Christmas. But um, Pentecost is the day the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles, and it is the day that the church was born. So, uh, oh, Mass will be celebrated today for uh, Richard Stigliano. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You raise the dead to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You give light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every, in every people and nation, Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in, in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem, 
At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded. In an amazement, they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our responsorial psalm is, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my, be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them and everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one through many of its parts, all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For one in spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons. And we are all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth that proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. And you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I always liked the Feast of Pentecost, firstly because I 
remember that it's uh, the day the Holy Spirit was made manifest. And it's also uh, the day that's the birthday of the church, and that's uh, wonderful in and of itself. But it's also a special day for me. I kind of think of it as sort of an anniversary. And the anniversary is I was ordained a deacon back in 1996. And uh, it was kind of nice. Um, what happened was, in those days, we were allowed to request a date for our diaconate ordination, and then the bishop would come to the church where we were assigned. I was assigned at St. Thomas Church in Cory, Pennsylvania, and uh, I looked at the calendar and said, you know, there's Sunday, May 26th, which was two things. First of all, as I'm sure you know, May 26th is John Wayne's birthday. And so I said, I could be ordained on John Wayne's birthday. And at the same time, there was May 26th that year was Pentecost Sunday, the day the Holy Spirit came into the world. Now, I didn't tell the bishop about John Wayne's birthday, but I treasured that knowledge in my heart. Uh, but the thing is this, you know, I, as time has gone on, I realize, and as I'm sure you do, that John Wayne was just an actor in some good movies, and the Holy Spirit has actually done so much for us and with us and in us. But, and, but it's, it seemed like a very appropriate day to be ordained on the day that the Holy Spirit was made manifest. Because what a deacon is supposed to do is proclaim the word. He's supposed to teach a bit. He's supposed to be a good servant to God's people. And... It just seemed appropriate that that's a day in which you're calling down the Holy Spirit upon you, saying, God, help me in this ministry and, 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 and work in me, on me, and through me. Because when we think back to that birthday of the church, that's exactly what happened. The apostles were together in that room, and Jesus had told them, go back to Jerusalem, wait, pray, and I'll send my spirit to you. And what happened? Well, that day, that day of Pentecost, the spirit came and they were transformed in a way. They began to speak in tongues and we heard exactly about all that in the first reading. And they went out and began to preach and everybody said, wait a second, aren't these men Galileans? You know, they were simple fishermen, most of them, but uh, we all hear them speaking in our native tongues, and we are Parthians and Medes and Elamites and inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of, of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome. And they all heard them in their native tongue. There was something great and wonderful going on, and if we would read further, we'd hear how Peter then got up and began to preach. And... I think 3,000 were baptized that day. And it was a great and wonderful day because it was the day that well, it all began. And I felt that at the beginning of my ordained ministry, it would be great to call down that same spirit. And you know, I didn't speak in tongues. And I have not baptized 3,000 people in a day. I think my record is six. But... Um, it's okay, because we all have a part to do. And I think that's what we need to make sure we all think about on Pentecost, because it's not just a day about, oh yeah, the apostles were changed 2,000 years ago. It's not just a day in which, okay, the Holy Spirit blesses the church somehow, but it's a day in which we're supposed to remember two things. One, we all share in that mission. The mission is to make the world a holy place. The mission is to make the world a better place. The mission is to share what it is we believe and help others come to see the light, to understand what Jesus has done for them, what God is willing to continue to do for them, and then have them appreciate all that and come to a deeper faith that allows them to go forth and change the world too. That's part of it, but also, uh, what we need to remember as we celebrate Pentecost is that same spirit that so transformed the apostles can transform us too. We've been given that same gift of the spirit and baptism and confirmation, and we've been promised that if we remain open to God, open to his promptings, he'll fill our hearts with that spirit and 
Well, our lives will be different. Our lives will be better. Our lives will be holier. And then they'll probably be happier as well. So what we want to make sure we remember on Pentecost is that we have this great mission, that we're part of something wonderful, that we're part of Jesus' plan for the salvation of souls. And we need to make sure that we keep asking, what can I do? Where can I help? How can I be the good messenger, the good witness, the good evangelist that I'm called to be. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prompted and inspired by the Holy Spirit, let us offer our petitions to the Father. That the church may be energized by the gift of the Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Spirit may guide those who are working to protect life at all stages. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are sick may be comforted by the uniting of their suffering to Christ's redemptive suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community of faith may be blessed with increasing faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Dix Digliano, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all those who have died, that they may soon rest in the eternal peace of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear us as we place our prayers before you and answer them according to your will. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who has humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Humble spirit and contrite heart, and by you, O Lord, may I sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, 
for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truths through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Lawrence our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Dick Stigliano, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, keep me safe for everlasting life. Now, since we cannot have regular communion together, please recite with me this prayer so that we may have spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Well, as always, I'd like to thank you for being with us today. Now, last week, uh, there were three announcements, and I could only remember two, uh, so I finally remembered the third one. And that is, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the changes that are happening in church if you would be going to Mass in person. Uh, you know, we used to have ribbons on all the pews, so you could only sit in every other pew or every third pew, and that's all been taken down. People can sit pretty much where they want, but they're still encouraged to spread out. Now, to facilitate that, I have not compressed the mass schedule. You know, our, we would have our normal three masses on a weekend, one Saturday night and two on Sunday morning. But as you know, we've added a couple. So we still have 4 o'clock and 6 o'clock on Saturday night, and then 8, 10, and 12 on Sunday morning. That way, people who are still a little bit nervous can definitely come to that 6 o'clock on Saturday night or the noon on Sunday and find room to spread out so there can be some good social distancing. Still, people are 
encouraged to wear masks if they haven't been um, vaccinated yet. Masks are no longer a hard and fast requirement though, so that's going to make some people nervous, I know. Uh, and I, I feel bad about that, but that's the rule right now. Thirdly, uh, let's see, there are some things we still don't do. For instance, well, one thing we do is we uh, sanitize our hands when we enter the church, and that will continue. I sanitize my hands before I distribute communion. I wear a mask. We all distribute in communion. People will not be shaking hands. We will have a sign of peace, but it's supposed to be a verbal or a nod or something like that. Um, the collection basket will still not be passed around. There still will be no holy water in the fonts, and we will still continue to sanitize the pews after each Mass. Uh, so as time goes on and you're feeling more and more comfortable, please do come back uh, to Mass in person. Uh, but uh, I imagine we will continue this ministry at least until Christmas, and who knows? I uh, enjoy it so much that we may continue forever. Well, not forever, but for a while. Anyway, um, now next week's Mass will be a little different. I was just notified by Jerry. There is one little change. And that is, next week's Mass, because we have a deacon who's going to be ordained, or a man who's going to be ordained a deacon, uh, his name is uh, Frank Hanna. He's a lector here once in a while. But... Um, He'll be ordained on Friday night, and then we'll record the Mass, which will be his first Mass as a deacon, at 4 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, and he'll get to see that one on Sunday morning. So it'll be in the big church and look a little different from our normal format, but it should be rather nice and exciting. So anyway, again, thanks for being with us today and always, and uh, hope to see you soon, if not next week on camera.